All right, mates. How do you do? In today's video, we're doing the Death Knight starting experience, starting off in Acarus the Ebon Hold, and then moving into the Scarlet Enclave. So let's go! My hero, that's what you once were. You stood boldly against the shadow and purchased another dawn for the world with your life. But the evil you fought is not so easily banished. The victory you claimed, not so easily held. For now, the specter of death looms above the world yet again, and it has found new champions to bring about its final reign. Knights of darkness, wielding runes of death and destruction, bound by the will of the Lich King. This is the hour of their ascension. This is the hour of your dark rebirth. Not to be confused with the things that Gul'dan created by putting the souls of dead Shadow Council Warlocks into dead Stormwind Knights, the Death Knights of Acarus, introduced as playable in Wrath of the Lich King, were the first hero class added to World of Warcraft, which is why they start at level 55. Death Knights of Acarus are trained for one purpose, to eradicate the last bastions of light in the Plaguelands, specifically the Scarlet Crusade and Argent Dawn Paladin Orders, and they report to the Lich King directly, so that's cool. Our hero today is Bulk Bogan again. He'd been leveling this entire time, but he died, and now he's a Death Knight. Bulk woke up on a mound of bodies within Acarus the Ebon Hold, which is a scourged necropolis floating above the Scarlet Enclave. It was Bulk's lucky day. Instructor Resuvius had seemingly deemed him worthy of becoming a Herald of Arthas. Otherwise, he would have ended up being food for hungry ghouls. Acarus itself was built by some skeleton bloke called Obrahim, an advisor to Kalthazard. Obrahim also worked on Naxxramas, but it's said that Acarus is so powerful that even Naxxramas would not be able to stand a direct assault from it. So it would be a real shame if these Death Knights did something like, I don't know, rise up against the Lich King and take the Necropolis for themselves or something. Anywho, Bulk immediately reported to the Lich King, and he was like, Gaze upon my brother. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to keep doing that voice, it hurts. The Scarlet Crusade are down there, and those knobs at Light's Hope as well. You will become my force of retribution, so off you go. Speak to Instructor Resuvius. See ya. Bulk approached Instructor Resuvius, and now his training could really begin. His first task was to go over there to that weapon rack and grab a sword, and then use it on a rune forge. So our hero did that. Now use the rune forge to engrave the rune blade. So he did that as well. Good job. Things will get a little bit more exciting now. So I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is, Death Knights are afflicted by something we call the Endless Hunger, which causes a measurable pain. But the good news is, you can keep it at bay. All you have to do is inflict pain on others. So why don't you go to one of those unworthy initiates over there, set them free, and then kill them. Bulk approached one of the initiates and set them free. They were like, I ain't scared, come at me brah. They grabbed themselves a weapon and a fight to the death began, and Bulk straight up murdered them, although his rotation was confusing and he had no idea what he was doing. Well done, knew you could do it. You're bloody ready. Go back to the Lich King, he wants to show you his eye. The Lich King advised our hero that it was important to learn your surroundings before rushing headlong into battle. I have this eye thing here, right? It's kind of like the Eye of Sauron. In fact, I'm surprised we haven't been sued. You can use it to grant yourself sight beyond sight and get an idea of the lay of the land. And whatever it sees, I see. So don't mess about with it or be a perv. Bolt used the eye to analyze the land below the necropolis. He had a quick look-see at the new Avalon Forge, the new Avalon Town Hall, the Scarlet Hold, and the Chapel of the Crimson Flame. It was pretty obvious that the Scarlet Crusade were preparing for battle. And there was something else. The Lich King could sense it. An old enemy he destroyed long ago. Psst. He's talking about Malgarnith. Oh, that's probably nothing to worry about. Let's send the full might of the Scourge before they have a chance to evacuate their homes and build up their defences. I need you to go to the first floor of Acarus and talk to High Lord Darian Mograine. Tell him I've decided death to all. You'll know what that means. It was pretty clear what that meant. Bulk took the portal to the first floor and found Darian. The horns of war will soon echo across this land, and it's going to be so loud the dead will wake up and it's going to be brilliant. You and your brethren will lead the charge, Bulk Bogan. The march upon New Avalon begins now. Go report to Scourge Commander Thalanor. He's over there on the balcony. A hero spoke to Thalanor, who had a Scourge Griffin at the ready. Jump on the Griffin, mate. It's time to head down to Death's Breach. Speak to Prince Valinar when you get down there. As our hero flew down to Death's Breach, he decided to give himself a little theme tune. He was having a whale of a time. When he landed, he took one look at Prince Valinar and realised the guy was a bloody vampire. Or Sad Lane, which are undead blood elves in service of the Scourge. Do you smell it? Fresh meat. 
Prince Valinar started dribbling, and Bulk really didn't feel comfortable at all. Soz, mate. I sometimes forget not everyone enjoys eating people. Anyway, you're here to lead the charge against the Scarlet Crusade, right? Well, first things first. Go and kill a bunch of them, I guess. There were a couple of other quests available in Death's Breach. A skeleton called Orothos the Sky Darkener approached Bulk and was like, We use Saronite arrows to kill any man or woman we see fleeing Havenshire. But Saronite is hard to come by, so if you find any of our arrows out there on the battlefield, bring them back to me. Recycling is important. And finally, on the way out of the camp, our hero spoke to Salonel the Horseman. Do you want a mount? The Scarlet Crusade have a whole bunch of horses, so they won't be needing for much longer. Go and steal one. Bring it back here, and I'll transform it into a Death Charger for you. Bulk head down to the battlefield and kill pretty indiscriminately. Not just trained Scarlet Crusade soldiers, but the citizens and peasants as well. He figured he might as well enjoy being a bad guy. It's not like there's going to be any consequences. He made sure to collect any Saronite arrows he could find. And when all of that was done, he grabbed one of the Scarlet Crusade's horses from the stable and rode back to Death's Breach. Salinar informed our hero to give him a few minutes and then come back and talk to him. Prince Valinar was pleased. I just realised their names rhyme. You've dismantled their front lines, Bulk Bogan. Next up, we're going to attack some more strategic, practical targets. Go speak to Gothic the Harvester. Bulk quickly went over to Salinar first to see if the Death Charger was ready. Hey, so if you want that mount, you're going to have to fight for it. One of the Dark Riders has taken it into the Realm of Shadows. I'll teleport you there, but you'll need to kill him if you want the horse. So Bulk popped into the Shadow Realm, killed the Dark Rider and gained himself a nice new mount. Next, our hero spoke to Gothic the Harvester. The Scarlet Crusade are getting a bit desperate. They've set up a blockade at Light's Point and are trying to strip the Havenshire mine of all resources. So take this portable plague spreader, head to the mine and use it on some miners. It should turn them into ghouls, but it might not, just saying. Come back when you've got five ghouls following you. Bulk wasn't sure what Gothic meant when he said the Plague Spreader might not turn the miners into ghouls, but he soon found out. He spent bloody ages using the Plague Spreader on miners, only for them to constantly turn into angry ghosts instead of ghouls, and the ghosts weren't friendly. But eventually, he managed to gain five ghoul followers and return to the Harvester. The time to assault the fleet that likes point has come. Report back to Prince Valinar or something. Prince Valinar then explained the plan. Just outside the Havenshire mine, you'll see a minecart. You're to climb inside it and hide. One of the miners will then unwittingly transport you aboard one of the Crusade ships. And then you're going to use their bloody cannon against them. And it's going to be brilliant. Once you're done, call a Scourge Griffin and it will bring you back here. So our hero went ahead and did that. It was a pretty elaborate plan, but it actually worked. And he felt like Rambo whilst he was on the ship blowing up 100 Scarlet Defenders on the shore. He just wiped out the entire Scarlet fleet in a matter of minutes. Oh, but Jesus. I'm so excited. All that's left of the Scarlet Crusade now are the denizens of New Avalon. Take my report back to Darien Mograin in the Ebon Hold. See ya. The entire fleet? Wow, I'm not in that much power since my father wielded... Well, never mind that. Darien was being a bit weird, but he ordered Bulk to head back down to Death's Breach, and then down there, Prince Valinar ordered our hero to head to the Crypt of Remembrance. Ghouls had already started the assault on New Avalon, and Bulk was to join them. When he arrived at the Crypt, he met with another Sand Lane called Prince Keleseth. Bulk started to wonder if they were actually princes, or if they all just put prince in front of their names. Head over to New Avalon Town Hall. Inside, you'll kill the mayor and grab the New Avalon Registry. With that, we'll be able to ensure total annihilation of these scum. Outside the crypt, Bulk acknowledged that there's a bunch of side quests involving a big cauldron in the middle of a field, but he can't stress enough just how tedious writing these scripts can be. He headed into New Avalon, murdering anyone who got in his way. He entered the Town Hall and assassinated Mayor Quimby, and grabbed the big registry book and ran back to Prince Galaseth. Hmm, they sent three vessels abroad, but where were they headed? What? These coordinates are in Northrend. And what the bloody hell does Crimson Dawn mean? Right, new plan. Keleseth pulled out a little box and gave it to our hero. Inside that box are my persuaders. Equip them, and then just hit soldiers in New Avalon. Eventually one of them will spill the beans about this Crimson Dawn. So Bolt ran around interrogating soldiers. Bolt would be like, tell me your secrets. And most of the soldiers were like, you what mate? You hit like a girl. Eventually one of the soldiers broke and revealed that the Crimson Dawn is an awakening. The light speaks to the High General, and we just do what we're told. Some of us stay behind, some of us get to leave. I don't know anything more, I swear. Bulk decided to inflict a little bit more pain, just to be sure. Please! Alright, there's one more thing. A courier arrived soon, from Hearth Glen. It... And then he died. Prince Galaseth was a bit annoyed. An awakening? What the hell does that even mean? Maybe this courier will have some more information. Galaseth then immediately offered Bulk a follow-up quest. In the space of a few seconds, I've managed to send Orbaz, Thessarian, and Kulteria behind enemy lines to search for this courier. 
You may be wondering how I did that so quickly, but we don't have time for questions. They've set up a base of operations in the Scarlet Tavern, opposite the Chapel of the Crimson Flame. Go there, and Orbaz Bloodbane will update you on the situation. Our hero quickly made his way to the tavern with a new Avalon, and Orbaz Bloodbane and Thessarion both had some quests. Gotta be honest, we don't have a bloody clue where or when this courier's supposed to show up. However, we did find out they have a schedule of patrol routes in the Scarlet Hold, so I want you to go there and steal it. And Thessarion was like, we came here with Coltira Deathweaver, but breaking through the Scarlet Lines was a little bit tougher than we thought. I'm not sure if he's dead or alive. I mean, I guess he was dead anyway, but y you know what I meant. They took him to the Scarlet Hold, so keep your eyes out for him in there, will you? Upon entering the Hold, Bulk went upstairs first. He knew where he was going, because, let's face it, all holds in World of Warcraft look exactly the same, don't they? Scarlet Commander Roderick was up there guarding the schedule, but he wasn't too difficult. Bulk collected the schedule and then head down to the basement to see if Coltira was down there. And he was. You've set off an alarm, you bloody idiot. The High Inquisitor and his acolytes will be here soon. I'm too injured to help, so you're going to have to deal with them, or else we're both dead. Or double dead. I don't know, whatevs. Once Bulk had dealt with High Inquisitor Valroth and his cronies, Coltira advised him to chop Valroth's head off and return it to Thessarion. Don't worry about me. You might want to tell Thessarion they're executing prisoners at the chapel. Maybe he'll send you there to play the hero once more. Our hero then head back to the tavern. A bit confused as to why Coltira didn't come back with him. It's time for some payback. Knight Commander Plaguefist and his Death Knights are headed to the Chapel of the Crimson Flame. If you hurry, you can catch up with them. By the time our hero arrived at the chapel, he'd missed most of the action. He approached Commander Plaguefist to see if there was anything left to do. We tore the chapel apart and then had a look at the prison house. And guess what? It's full of Argent Dawn prisoners. Most of them were already dead, but there's a few still breathing. I was about to go and execute the survivors myself, but if you want to do it, be my guest. There's a real feisty human in there that I think you'll take pleasure in murdering. Inside the prison house, Bulk saw the human in question. Some lady called Ellen Stanbridge. You'll never take me alive, you jerk. Hang on. Bulk? Bulk Bogan? Is that you? I'd recognise that face anywhere. What have they done to you? Bulk had absolutely no idea who this woman was. You don't remember me, do you? Damn Scorch. Think, Bulk. Try to remember the hills and valleys of Elwyn where you were born. You have to fight the Lich King's control. Don't let him use you. Fight it, Bulk. Bulk was really bloody confused now. At this point, Commander Plaguefist yelled from outside. What the shit is taking you so long, Bulk? There's no time. I'm done for anyway. You have to kill me. Do it. Do it or they kill us both. I love you, Bulk. So our hero did exactly what he'd gone in there to do in the first place and murdered her. Outside, the Knight Commander was like, felt good, didn't it? You're one of us now. The Scourge. Forever. You should report back to Thessarion. Tell him I said you're brilliant, you cold-blooded son of a bitch. Bulk returned to the tavern and handed that quest in to Thessarion. Then old Maz Bloodbane piped up. We've figured out where to find this courier, Bulk. You'll be passing by the Scarlet Overlook pretty soon. Go over there, use this makeshift cover. It's basically a pretend bush. When the courier is close enough, strike him down and steal his stuff. Especially his clothes. So Bulk used the pretend bush and waited for the courier to spawn, and then murdered him and looted his corpse. There was a message amongst the courier's belongings which basically just said, The armies of Hearthglen and Tirithfell are less than a day's ride from New Avalon. We'll be there soon. Hugs and kisses. Time to head back to Orbaz. They have no idea they'll be marching into a massacre when they get here. Twats. Okay, step two. You got the courier's clothes, right? Put them on. You're going to go ahead and give that message to the High General herself, Bridget Abendis. We have to make them think everything's normal. You'll find her at King's Harbour. If we're lucky, she'll even tell you about this Crimson Dawn. In his Scarlet Crusade disguise, Bulk head down to the harbour. Literally walked past a small army of Scarlet Crusaders without any trouble at all. He handed High General Abendis the message and she wasn't happy. If those armies arrive in New Avalon, they'll be slaughtered. Listen, courier, the Scarlet Lands are lost. You need to return to Galvar with this message. Turn your armies around and prepare your ships for travel to the Frozen Wastes. We'll meet in Northrend. Also, give him this journal. It explains... Why are you chuckling to yourself? Bloody listen, courier. The journal explains everything. On the way back to the tavern, Bulk had a quick glance at the contents of the journal. It was kind of long. In a nutshell, Abendis had begun to hear a voice which frequently said, Come to me in her dreams. And eventually, when she was awake as well. She assumed it was the Holy Light and decided it was time to ferret out unbelievers within her ranks. This soon turned to the idea of a new crusade, made up of only the most faithful elite who could do the Light's bidding in Northrend. And this new order soon gained the name the Scarlet Onslaught, and the mission to Northrend became known as the Crimson Dawn. Or Baz was about as impressed as you are with that revelation. Is that it? The Crimson Dawn is just some corporate rebranding? What a load of shit. Oh well, they'll be sailing into their deaths anyway. Let's focus on the encroaching armies. Take that journal back to Darien Mograine and the Ebon Hold. Don't worry, you don't have to travel all the way back there. I'll just open a death gate 
because I'm a nice bloke. Bulk wasn't in the Ebon Hold long. Darren Mograine accepted the journal and was like, The armies of Hearthglen and Tirisfull have arrived, just in time to see their enclave in flames. Head down to Death's Breach. The Lich King awaits you to finish off these knobs. Bulk quickly head down to Death's Breach and approach the Lich King. Do you want to ride a bloody great frostworm and slaughter the last bastion of the Scarlet Crusade? Stupid question. Of course you do. Go ahead and blow this horn and then jump on the big frost dragon. Bulk had the best time of his life. Or death. Or undeath. I don't know. Who cares? The point is he bloody loved it. Once that was done, and the Scarlet Crusade had been vanquished from the Plague Lands, it was time to focus on the Argent Dawn. We're going to assault Light's Hope Chapel next. Go northwest through the cave and take the path leading to Browman Mill. Bulk followed the Lich King's directions and soon arrived at the mill. Scourge Commander Thalanor was waiting for him. The battle for Light's Hope Chapel is going to start soon, so head over there. Darien Mograine, a bunch of other familiar faces and 10,000 Scourge forces are about to fight 300 Defenders of the Light. And I'm not being funny, I'm pretty sure you're going to win that. Arriving at the chapel, High Lord Mograine gave a little speech. Here is where I sacrificed everything to free my father, and now I come to destroy it. This was starting to get really exciting. Bog spoke to Darien and let him know he was ready, and then found himself having to wait for five minutes, and it really ruined the immersion. Every now and then, Mograine would yell something like, It's nearly time! Not long now! But the battle eventually got started. Bog Bogan, Darien Mograine, Coltira Deathweaver, Thessarian, Orbaz Bloodbane, and 10,000 Scourge forces began their assault. Unfortunately, after about a third of the Defenders of the Light had fallen, Darien suddenly started having a few performance problems with the corrupted Ashbringer, because Tyrion Fordring had arrived and was using his light powers to turn the tides of the battle. And out of nowhere, the battle was over, and the Argent Dawn had emerged victorious. Tyrion stood over the kneeling Mograine and was like, You allowed yourself to be consumed by darkness and hatred, just like that jerk Arthas. You became everything your father fought against. Your master knows what lies beneath this chapel, which is why he's too much of a pussy to come here himself. Darien responded, Save your breath, old man. You don't know what you... But before he could finish that thought, his bloody father appeared. And then things got real emotional. A distant memory of the past began to play out in front of everyone's eyes. A young Darien Mograine talking to his father, pleading with him to let him join the fight against the Scourge. You're too young, Darien. I couldn't bear to lose you. The shade of the young Darien disappeared and Alexandro suddenly looked like he was addressing the real Darien directly. One day, you shall wield the Ashbringer and bring great pride to our people. But that day is not today. However, the Lich King suddenly appeared. Sorry to break up this touching moment, but he pulled out a soul shard and trapped Alexandros' soul inside. He's mine now, bitches. This was enough to make Darien Mograin come to his senses. You bloody prick! He attempted to attack the Lich King, but, well, if he'd actually managed to defeat him, then Wrath of the Lich King would have been a pretty short expansion, wouldn't it? As Darien gasped for air, the Lich King attempted to cast Apocalypse, and just as all seemed lost, Darien threw the Ashbringer to Tyrion. He became surrounded by a glow of light, and the Ashbringer was cleansed. He then charged towards the Lich King, Ashbringer in hand, and struck as hard as he could, and surprisingly, actually managed to injure the Lich King, who then teleported away. Light's Hope Chapel was safe. The Argent Dawn had yet again managed to defend this land against impossible odds. High Lord Darien Mograin approached Tyrion and pledged his allegiance. Although our kind has no place in your world, the Knights of the Ebon Blade will join you in your fight to bring an end to the Lich King. Bulk had been watching all this unfold, and although it was all really cool, he couldn't help but suddenly feel like he wasn't even the main character in a video game he pays £10 a month to play, and that's outrageous. Darien must have noticed this because he approached our hero. We're free from the Lich King's command, champion. I don't know about you, but I'd quite like to try and make amends for all the horrible stuff we've been doing. If you'll join me, I reckon we should go and take back Acherus from the Scourge. Seemed like the right thing to do, so they all used their death gates to get back to the Necropolis quickly, Slay 10 Scourge and kill that big abomination guy, Patchwork, on the second floor. Then we'll pretty much have control of this place. So our hero quickly did that and returned to the High Lord. I have one more task for you before we finish this video, Bulk. Take this letter from Tyrion to the King in Stormwind. Hopefully his endorsement is enough for us to be accepted by the Alliance. Bulk used a really convenient portal nearby and arrived just outside the gates of Stormwind. As he walked through the city, people didn't seem all that pleased to see him. Some people threw fruit, some people threw poop. Some of them even spat in his general direction. He entered Stormwind Keep and approached the king and handed him the letter. And the king was like, Any friend of Tyrion's is a friend of ours. Wubba lubba dub dub! And we're leaving it there! So I'm going to have to skip next Tuesday's video because I don't have enough time and I don't want to rush something out. I've got a really important meeting. But the next starting zone video will be focused on the Worgen in Gilneas. Uh, and that will probably be in a couple of weeks' time. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching and see ya!